What's up, guys? My name's Chad Lance. I like to start videos with fighting poses. <laughs> uh, the new marquee weapons are pretty much never worth it, so we're not even going to cover that at all. As far as the palindrome, it does have rifle barrel, in which case it's useless. If it doesn't have rifle barrel, don't even bother looking at the palindrome. It will never be really worth it. Uh, the curtain call is pretty cool with full auto, reinforced barrel, field choke, and the knee pads. Matador does not have knee pads. This is the second best shotgun in the game right now for PvP. So that's pretty cool. Knee pads is a really good perk. Basically gives you the fleet footed sliding ability, not really the sprinting ability, which is uh, something that's really good because it catches people off guard a lot. If you slide from a longer distance, people are like, whoa, they're sliding for a really long distance. That's really weird. They're not going to be able to shotgun me in a one hit kill range by the time they slide in like that. I have time to react. Just kidding, you don't. They slide right up in your DMs and they got you slain instantly. So that's actually a pretty cool perk of catch you off guard. The fact that full auto reduces the uh, effective one hit kill range, that's actually pretty cool because it will get you into essentially a situation that you usually would get a full uh, kill on one shot with a regular side because this will take you a little bit farther with knee pads. Plus it has full auto, so that's pretty cool. And if you don't like knee pads, up close and personal or just close and personal is a really great perk too, because if you don't kill them with a shotgun uh, shot from full auto, you'll probably kill with a melee, which is pretty awesome. Uh, nothing else this week is really that like, great except for the event horizon for PVP, hidden hand, quick draw, and short gaze is pretty good loadout. Uh, Wild Hike SLS 20 is one of my personal favorites, but the community doesn't really like it. And underdog is a solid perk. You don't really use perfectionist, uh, unless it's on PvE, but you typically wouldn't use that for PvP much anyway. But Quick Draw, Hidden Hand, and Short Gaze are really good alone. Underdog's decent, I guess, to attach on top of that. And nothing else here really matters. Anton's Rule isn't that great, plus it's running freaking a Lunch Tracker and Feeding Frenzy anyway, so nobody cares about that. This Keystone's pretty nifty for PvE. It's not really something I would recommend for PvP content, but having Outlaw with Extended Mag and Hidden Hand on a Keystone, which is a really good scout rifle for PvE because it hits hard and fires at reasonable si uh, speed, pretty solid mag size, uh, plus even a larger mag size because Extended Mag. Outlaw gives you a fast reload after having a really long mag size, you don't have to reload for a long time anyway, so you're just basically constantly shooting at stuff with high impact scout rifles, so it hits really hard. Hit hand makes it a lot easier to get those precision shots. Pretty solid keystone for this week for PvE. Um, otherwise, for PvE, Unto Dust has Cluster Bomb, Field Scout, um, these don't really matter. But if Cluster Bomb, Field Scout, as we discussed in previous episodes, and it was a big deal on Twitter, actually does a lot of damage with um, stationary targets such as Axis. If you were to do an Axis fight with a legendary rocket launcher, there's a lot of other times you'll find a usefulness for a stationary target you want to shoot at, especially Ultras. Um, so Cluster Bomb is a really good option for that if you're looking for a legendary rocket launcher for PvE, especially a Void one. Uh, Field Scout gives you more ammo, so that's always nice. And then Spray and Play is really good too. The previous one everybody was freaking out about had Tripod here because it's less times you have to reload because you have an extra rocket in your chamber. But Spray and Play is essentially the same thing because after you run out of rockets, because you will in PvE, you shoot all your shots, uh, you reload really fast. So you get through your ammo pretty fast anyway. So that's a pretty solid option there. The Ghost Shell is 35, 34, 35, 24, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, one off from a perfect roll. So that's pretty awesome if you're looking for a Ghost that's into like Discipline. Uh, if you don't have one yet. But there's almost every week there's a perfect roll Ghost Shell somewhere. So you probably should wait on that maybe. Um, or you can buy that while you're waiting. I don't know what your situation is with Legendary Marks. If you like the archetype of Park Parthion Shot, which is the slowest rate of fire but highest impact pulse rifle, can two tap enemies in PvP. Pretty solid damage for PvE. Did I say PvP earlier? Two taps people in PvP and pretty solid damage in PvE. I'll just correct myself just in case I didn't earlier. Um, counterbalance is really nice. Plus the brace frame for further stability is really nice as well. And outlaw. So PvE content. You're going to get kills with it because it hits hard. You definitely get at least one kill with your mag size unless you're shooting an ultra. And uh, you get a fast reload speed with it. With Brace Frame, low max size doesn't matter because Outlaw. You might want to run rifles for PvP maybe, but really this gun doesn't experience range issues, so I probably would run P Brace Frame regardless, especially since you can two-tap people in PvP anyway. So why do you need 27 rounds of your mag for? Are you missing all of those shots? Come on, really. And you have Outlaw? Bro. The Teacup Tempest suffers the same issues the Anton's Rule has this week. It has pretty solid perks, but reeling this tracker and feeding freeze is kind of worthless right now in the current ammo economy meta, so don't worry about it this week. 
The only other thing you're forced to really cover weapon-wise that the vendors these nowadays is the Wormwood. Uh, it suffers the same issues as the other sidearms in the stock this week, where they have Feeding Frenzy, you don't really have extra rounds to reload with anyway, so why would you need Feeding Frenzy? Reactive Reload has the same issue, uh, where if you did, Reactive Reload would be dope, because you can get three type people, I'm pretty sure, with the Wormwood. Uh, hand loading ex extends range, and this extends your reload speed, or you can go lightweight, or whatever. I mean, it's fine, but it doesn't matter because you don't have extra rounds in the back anyway so this is basically a useless perk unless you wait until 30 seconds in which case while you're running a sidearm run a shotgun or a fusion rifle or a sniper rifle don't run a sidearm you're ruining it for all the rest of us gear wise is nothing really of worth for hunters at the future world this week same for dead orbit shacks offers a cloak that's close to perfect one off but it's not perfect this is the best k6 has which is too often a perfect ghost shell looks like the best thing we have for hunters this week is through numaraki uh three off from a perfect roll for a helmet which is pretty cool but again not perfect very close though and what was it the gauntlets is three off as well 58 58 is the highest you can get for gauntlets pretty close pulse rifle reload speed pretty solid for this meta and stuff um and then yeah 65 65 would be perfect for a helmet by the way in case you're wondering um i wouldn't really recommend specifically to buy anything uh, unless you just need something that's close enough and it's better than what you already have but again no perfect rolls so nothing is like get this now for a hunter this week moving on to no marquee for warlocks uh there's nothing really good of worth so Moving on to Shax, who doesn't really have much either. Ikora Ray is three off of the boots. It's a little bit better than Shax is four off from the chest piece. Dead Orbit doesn't have much either. Uh, <laughs> it's looking pretty bad for Warlocks this week. Future War Cult, the closest, is two off from a perfect roll of chest piece from Future War Cult for this week's uh, Hunter, not War Hunter, Warlock selection. Um, that's the best we got. Uh, it's not a perfect roll, but... It's pretty darn good, and it's better than most of you have, I can guarantee. All right, and to start off the last class of the week, Titan, Future Royal Cult, got nothing for you this week. Dead Orbit's looking a lot better. It's two off for the helmet and two off for the chest piece. That's pretty darn freaking good. Uh, most of you probably need to pick up either of these. Um, some of you probably don't. Good for you. Shax is so close. It looked really good at first, and then I forgot it was 86. 86 is a perfect roll, but still two off for the chest piece. Pretty good selections for Titans compared to Hunters and Warlocks this week. Zavala is falling a little short here, though. Best new mark he has is the boots. It's four off from a perfect roll, so I probably wouldn't worry about it unless you have nothing better, of course. Please give me a god of palindrome. Oh, darn. That sucks. Well, in any case, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, hopefully it helped you in some way. Appreciate you. Have a great day.